Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go a little more in depth with the VDL instruments, get a little more intimate with them, and uh, I want to show you some of the features uh, that they include, show you what some of these little fancy knobs and areas on the VDL instruments do. Uh, first thing I want to do actually though is come through and just give a little tour of uh, the main categories of the instruments. Again, this is the 252 update. Uh, we'll start here with the accessories folder. This just kind of contains all of your standard uh, percussion accessories for uh, percussion ensembles, uh, kind of your standard run-of-the-mill, uh, more or less orchestral type stuff. Um, then here uh, we have in the banks category, it's just an empty bank. Uh, banks is something we'll cover a little bit later on. We've got a few different chimes here, uh, some with just your standard hammer, uh, some actually being hit with xylophone mounts. Uh, and you'll see here we've got this sustain pedal control. Uh, any instrument that has this little PED at the end of it, um, you're able to um, control using pedal markings or actually using a pedal control. So if you wanted to um, have very specific control over when instruments were resonating, uh, this would apply to a few other instruments like vibes. Um, so that's pretty handy, especially if you're maybe using VDL in a live situation, uh, like on a mallet cat or a xylosynth or something. Let's hop back out here. Combination instruments. Uh, these are typically unpitched uh, instruments uh, that have just a collection of different accessories or um, instrument families mapped together. Uh, for instance, this one actually takes uh, a lot of the sounds of the concert bass and uh, a large tam-tam and puts them together into one. And then here this concert band combo uh, just takes uh, a lot of the common concert band instruments and puts them in one. So these are all, uh, as the name suggests, just combinations of various instruments. So uh, you can explore the uh, which instruments on which by checking out the key maps uh, in your uh, manual, uh, the VDL user manual. And uh, hand symbols, uh, just symbols that are crashed together with your hands. You've got a few different ones to choose from there. And then here, you've got a whole slew of different suspended symbols. And the drumline battery, uh, this is your, your drumline battery proper. And each one of these will have uh, a few varieties of them. Um, here, just to kind of define what some of these terms are, uh, you'll notice this one has snare line auto RL. That stands for auto right left. And um, when they recorded the sounds for virtual drum line, they recorded right hand samples and left hand samples. So uh, this one sets it so that when it plays back, it'll automatically alternate between right and left. And that's simply because whenever a, a normal person or a real human being plays, there's going to be slight inflections between the right and left hands. They'll never be completely identical and mechanical. So that just uh, makes it to where if you don't want to control the right and left hand sounds, that will do it for you. But here, like on the snare line manual and manual light, uh, you actually have access to the right and left hand sounds. So you know, a paradiddle will sound like a paradiddle if you write using the right, left, right, right samples in a row. Double strokes will sound like double strokes. And you'll notice all of these have the MW on them. And uh, basically what that means is that you have mod wheel control over that instrument. You can see if you look down at the keyboard at the bottom, I'm moving the mod wheel. Um, and right here, as I'm moving it, it's telling you that the zone will move from the center of the head to the halfway to the edge and then at the edge of the head. Uh, so anything or any instrument rather that has an MW on it just means that it can be affected by the mod wheel and you'll get different sounds or different techniques uh, or a variety of things and that will vary depending on the instrument. And that's something that if you look in the key maps in the user manual it will actually tell you the different uh, mod wheel zones. So. Those are those. Uh, tenor line, we've got um, something I didn't mention on the snares. We have your uh, tenor line, which is going to be a collection of uh, people playing together, more of an, like a tenor line ensemble sound. And then we have our tenor solo manual, just a single tenor player. You have a similar thing going on in the snare line instrument. Basses have a similar thing going on here. You might have noticed in the last two, we have this VDL1 instrument and basically the, what uh, what that's there for is if you have any compositions that you wrote using VDL1 you're able to uh, play back those sounds or play back those files using those mappings. 
drums. This is going to be any other standard drum that's not a uh, drumline battery instrument. So there's a pretty decent amount in there. Effects. This is basically anything that doesn't fall under the accessories category. Some of these maybe you could consider accessories, but these are things that are typically used more like effects. One thing that I like to always point out here is that there's actually a metronome instrument that you can use for making click tracks and such. So that's pretty cool. Finale specific instruments. If I click in here, you'll see it's pretty much identical to the last directory, uh, but the instruments were just uh, tweaked. The volume was bumped. Uh, on all these instruments because the way of Finale handles uh, loading in instruments. Glockenspiel and Quartales. Uh, this is our first mallet instruments we've gotten to. Um, something I want to point out here is that for every keyboard instrument, and Tiffany included, there's actually three hardnesses of mallets. Um, so, for instance, for Quartales, you have uh, aluminum as the hardest, and then bright, and then medium plastic. And same thing here with uh, the Glock. We've got a brass, bright plastic, and medium plastic. Uh, so you'll have the same thing going on there with marimbas and vibes. Gongs, got a whole slew of gongs. A nice collection of Chinese gongs there. Same thing with marimbas that we got going on with the bells of Cretales. We've got the hard, medium, and soft, as well as birch shafts on the keys. Same thing here. This is just uh, synthetic. These are rosewood. Um, and here you can see we've got the light versions. Something I haven't mentioned yet that you might have seen in some of the other instruments is... Uh, they have light on the end, and basically the idea uh, between this, these standard instruments and the light versions is the amount of memory that's required to load the instruments in. So if you're worried you might not have enough memory, or if you just would prefer to use less memory when loading the instruments in, uh, you can load the light versions. Uh, for instance, with the snare line, rather than being almost 40 megabytes, it might be half of that, just because they're not loading in as many sounds. So that's it for the marimbas there. Uh, rhythm section, just got a few instruments from your standard rhythm section. Steel drums, got a, a nice little sampling there of a steel drum section. And timpani, similar to the other mallet keyboard instruments. We've got a hard, medium, and soft, some glissandi effects, uh, some other effects that are just kind of neat, something you could check out. Also have light versions of this. Then vibraphones. Pretty much identical to uh, the marimbas in terms of having hard, medium, and soft. And then here we've got uh, a variety of effects, uh, just like glissandi and, and such. There's actually four octave vibes have been sampled, some bowed vibes. Much like the chimes here, we've got the with sustain pedal control. So if you wanted to play with a mallet cat, or uh, I personally always use these when I write, just simply because I like to have total control over how long the notes resonate. Um, so something else to check out whenever you're writing. We've got some vocals here, uh, just some who's and ha's and various effects here in the vocals, and then some standard drum major vocals like band ten hut and all that good stuff. Some world percussion sounds. Uh, you can just kind of go and check those out, sample those. Got some nice African, uh, Latin, uh, African and Latin rather sounds going on there. And then xylophones, very similar to the other keyboard instruments. Uh, we've got a hard, medium, soft, uh, rattan shafts on them, and then light versions of those as well. All right, so that's a, a nice little overview of the instruments. Now, I've already talked about the difference between auto right, left, and the manual instruments, but I just want to point out a few things about that again. I'm going to hop onto my snare line instrument here, and then come down here and click a few of the keys. Right hand sounds. So you can hear some slight inflection between the two, and I'll just tap them on my MIDI keyboard so you can hear, uh, hear it a little better. You can actually hear that there's also a variety of, um, of velocity levels. Now, talking about velocity is basically the idea of however hard the drum is hit, you're going to get different different sounds. Not to be confused with the volume, was that with is actually um, talking about the snare line instrument. This is the volume of the snare line instrument. Um, whereas velocity is related to how hard the drum's being hit, and they actually sampled each instrument at a variety of velocities. So that's cool. Another thing here uh, I want to talk about is that I mentioned before is the idea of key maps. Um, if you check out here the little on-screen graphic we've got going on, 
Uh, it shows you for the snare line instrument how all the uh, various sounds are mapped to the keys. Um, obviously, uh, you can tune a snare drum to uh, a specific pitch, but um, all these notes that are mapped to the to the keyboard aren't actually mapped to uh, or the sound on the key. Uh, if you hit hit the the F sharp um, five, that's going to hit the left hand sample, uh, but it's obviously not necessarily an F sharp five. Uh, so that's just a good concept to grasp is the idea of key maps and um, how they relate to unpitched instruments. So we talked a little about mod wheel settings. Another thing you might notice here if you take a look at the Tenorline instrument is that it has the MW for mod wheel, but it also has a KS, which as you might remember from a previous video stands for a key switch. And any instrument in the VDL library that has a key switch or any instrument uh, that's in a native instrument library that has a key switch will have uh, these other pink keys down here on, on the bottom. Uh, I called them orange keys earlier. I meant pink. Uh, and you can see that when I hit this key switch, uh, here it's set to regular mallets. If I was to hit this key, it goes to puffy mallets. Um, so there's a few different instruments that have key switches. Uh, baseline instrument all have the ability to switch to puffies as well. Um, and then like the drum set instrument allows you to have a key switch that will switch from snares turned on and off and they actually sampled all of the sounds, uh, like not just the snare, uh, but the toms as well with the snares on and off just simply because you would get the uh, sympathetic vibrations on the toms with the snare turned on. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, you can see I've got my vibe instrument loaded here. Uh, I want to start to talk a little bit about the uh, various knobs we've got going on here. Uh, the first thing I want to point out just on the vibes here is we've got uh, we can control the fan speed and the fan level. Uh, for instance right now it's just it's not turned on yet so, but if I was to turn this up all the way you'll actually start to get a little bit of fan sound and then you can also control the speed of it. So that's a pretty cool little thing we got going on there. The other knobs I want to talk about here uh, will be specific to uh, each instrument. Like for instance here with the snare line, it'll tell you what the mod wheel currently is set to. The tenor line, we've got the mod wheel value 1 uh, because this affects uh, some of the sounds that are uh, farther down here on the instrument. Like right there, it's set to uh, shots. Now it's set to dreads and it'll gradually change depending on how the mod wheel is set. Here this controls the length of the buzz rolls. We've got three different lengths of buzz rolls in the tenorline instrument. And then again this is the, the key switch area. Coming back to the vibes, each one of these knobs is actually assigned to a MIDI controller and you can check out in the, uh, the VDL manual what those are actually assigned to. Um, but here you have some EQ controls. Uh, for instance, I'll come back to the to the vibes and play that. Now if I wanted maybe a slightly kind of tinier, tinier sound, could raise that up, raise the, and just kind of change the character of the sound. So you, you have some, um, I mean they're relatively limited, but allows you to kind of dial in the EQ of these instruments. Um, then here under length control, um, this actually controls how long it takes to reach the peak level of the particular sample you have loaded. So one better area to demonstrate this would be on the snare line instrument. Uh, right now the attack is set to uh, zero, which means that there, it takes zero time or zero seconds to actually get up to uh, the top of the peak of sound. However, if I was to dial this up, let's get it all the way up. You'll notice it just sounds a lot uh, less articulate. Almost like it's being played with a rubber tip. So you can get pretty creative with what you would do with this attack knob. Uh, I know that when I write, if I want to have sticks um, um, on the snare change to a rubber tip, I'll just turn the attack knob up to uh, a certain value. And you're able to get that sort of sound. I mean, there's a few other things you could dial in to do that as well. Um, but that's just something to kind of bear in mind. If you're wanting to, to tweak your sounds, you can actually do these with MIDI controls. Like, for instance, this one is 26. 
Uh, and then the release knob is something that you might want to keep in mind um, for instruments that have longer uh, release tails, like this Vibe, for instance, or gongs uh, have especially long tails. If you're noticing clipping and having issues there, uh, you might want to take a look at uh, lowering the release knob. So if I was to play it right now, you can hear that it, it rings for a while. Now if I was to turn this all the way down, listen to the way the sound changes. Here it dies out a lot quicker. Again, if I put it back up, do the same thing. You can hear the release tail is a lot longer on that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the one other item I want to touch on here when dealing with uh, uh, the instruments is the idea of these aux sends. Now, this is something that I kind of briefly mentioned in the last video, but I didn't really go through and describe how they work. Basically, the idea here, uh, you'll need to pull up your, your output area. Um, the amount of sound that is sent from here will decide how much of it actually gets played back here. And you can actually also control the level of these aux returns. Now, uh, you can assign uh, a variety of effects here. I'll just go ahead and uh, set that up, uh, a little reverb. You would need to come in here and set it so that uh, each channel is actually played back. If, this, if these aren't configured, these won't actually get affected. So, right now, this is set to nothing. Uh, or to zero. I'm not sending any signal. If I come in here and get my right hand sample. Uh, if I was to dial this up, I'll also turn it way up. You can hear that's actually getting sent, but now the cool thing is if I was to select my tenor instrument and come in and hit the keys. It's all on the puffies, obviously, but you're not actually going to get any uh, reverb because this this aux send isn't actually set to to send anything. Um, so if I wanted to maybe set up a different uh, aux send for my tenors, I could turn this up all the way, and I'll do this one on, I don't know, let's give it some distortion, something funky. Uh, I can have a distorted sound. Let's see, aux send. Up, oh, gotta come in here and configure it. See, it didn't work because I didn't have it configured. And if you only uh, have just one channel uh, set here, or one um, output channel, it'll only go to that one side. If I had this set to not connect it, it would only come out the left side. So if I come back in here, on our right left, so that's a little loud and obnoxious, but if I turn this, dial this down a little more, You can actually hear that I'm getting a distorted sound. Cool. So, um, this was a relatively long video, but I just wanted to make sure that you got a nice, healthy dose of understanding uh, what all these knobs are about. And again, anything you don't understand uh, uh, or would like a little more in-depth explanation about, you can always check out your um, VDL 2.5 manual. So, that's it for this video. Stick around. We'll see you next time.